Hi, I'm an engineer and I'm going to show you the simplest way to unify all of physics using a simple fluid of space-time. If you consider that this fluid of space-time fills all of the universe and everything from black holes to doorknobs consume this fluid, well as the fluid is consumed and depleted, other fluid from different parts of space are going to accelerate toward the massive body to fill in the depletion and then you have an acceleration from all directions of the fluid toward the massive body. This acceleration of the fluid toward the massive body is the field of gravity, not the force of gravity, it's the field of gravity. We're going to discuss the force of gravity in a moment. If you want to see why and how the medium is consumed and what byproducts of consumption are, that's all discussed in the electrogravity series. We'll discuss how to get to that in a moment. So a lot of you can say, well, well, wait a minute. This sounds an awful lot like the ether that was disproved over 100 years ago. But I'm going to show you that is one of the biggest misconceptions in science. It's really horrible how bad the scientific history has been reported on that. Even now, we have other researchers reporting space-filling ether theories. So, it's not been disproven. And let me show you what actually happened back then. See, they ran a Michelson-Morley experiment, and that was to measure our velocity relative to the medium. And it registered a null result. And the way they reconciled with that is with a length contraction. The length, same length contraction that Albert Einstein hijacked for relativity. And that length contraction explains the null, result of, the null result of the experiment. Therefore, the experiment didn't fail. It just can't measure the medium. So the inability to measure the medium based on the velocity through the medium does not disprove the medium. Okay, Because the experiment's compensated for its velocity through the medium. Now, in this Wikipedia article, they make a mistake and they say, well, it led to special relativity, which rules out a stationary medium. Now, whether you call it an ether, a fabric of space-time, or a fluid of space-time, doesn't matter. A medium is a medium. Okay, special relativity does not rule out a stationary medium. We know that because later on in 1916, Albert Einstein gave us general relativity, which has a static medium, the fabric of space-time. So, if... The stationary medium was ruled out by special relativity. You cannot then reintroduce it in general relativity. Okay, now, ethereal mechanics is superior to all this because we have a dynamic medium. Okay, the length contraction equation, which compensated the Michelson-Morley experiment, was hijacked by special relativity. We're going to talk about that a, a couple of slides on. Right now, let's talk about what the force of gravity is. So if you have your starship sitting out here thrusting with thrusters on full, trying to keep its position relative to a black hole, it is stationary relative to the black hole and the medium is accelerating toward the black hole. Therefore, the velocity of your starship relative to the medium is in this direction. That is going to create an inertial force in the opposite direction. Now, let me be absolutely clear. This force of gravity, which we also call the gravitic force, is the acceleration of an object relative to the medium, not the velocity of an object relative to the medium. Let's be clear about that. This little water analogy we're using here is, you know, it's just an analogy. And the force of inertia, let's say you're in a different part of space where you're not near any gravitational well and the medium is pretty much uniform and not moving or not moving of any significant speed and you want to accelerate your spaceship well as you accelerate toward through the medium in this direction now your acceleration is relative to the medium in this direction again the inertial force is going to be an opposite so you can see here that the force of inertia and the force of gravity are the same force but their underlying cause is electromagnetic induction now, to be clear, it's not Faraday's law of induction because this is insufficient to explain the phenomenon because it is not the most fundamental explanation of induction. It's a special case. And the reason why it's a special case and cannot be part of a theory of everything is because it violates locality, among other rules of acquisition. It gets good answers, but 
you violate locality and other things, you cannot be a candidate for a theory of everything, and that are the rules of acquisition. So, how do we get a valid model of electromagnetic induction that is sufficient to explain gravity and inertia and induction? Well, ethereal mechanics starts from this most fundamental pretonic field equation. What we have is a pretonic charge that moves with a velocity Vs. This velocity is relative to the medium. And we're dividing it by uh, the vector r, which is some point out in space where we want to know how the field is. And this is the field matrix at that point. This is a matrix equation. This is a vortex matrix equation because there is no divide operator in standard vector equations. So this is a matrix field, not a vector field. If we take the time derivative of this matrix field, we end up with the inertial force and the magnetic force. And if you notice closely, our inertial force is F equals MA. In ethereal mechanics, mass, what you call mass, we call inertia, is square coulombs per meter. Now, this inertial force is also the gravitic force, as we demonstrated before. So this is new induction which is also the force of gravity, and it's the force of inertia. If we then apply these two models, the magnetic force and the gravit gravitic force, to a model of matter, which is two pretons rotating about each other at the speed of light, we end up generating the electric force. Yes, the electric force is synthesized from the magnetic and inertial forces. Now, there's another byproduct that we discussed about this model of matter, is that you can then predict the feeding of this model, of how it consumes the ether, to develop your gravitational field. Again, this is the gravitational field. This is the gravitational force. We talk about this in the electrogravity release, and we'll be talking about it some more in the cosmology release. And because we now understand how gravity is, is, is generated from matter, we can also now, for the first time in history, develop the constant g that are used in all of the gravitic equations. Now, this equation is in what we call natural units. Okay, If you notice, we have no arbitrary constants of relation in ethereal mechanics. We are a pure system of nature. We'd have no arbitrary. I mean, if all your units of measurement are arbitrary, there should be no arbitrary constants of relation. It's redundant. Okay, but to put this into legacy format so that you can go and, and, and derive G to see how close it is to the real value, measured value of G, you would use this equation. This is now in natural units. Basically, all to convert to natural units, you just multiply all of the force equations by km, which is mu naught over 4 pi. Okay, so therefore you divide this by mu naught over 4 pi to put it into natural units. Now, this is mu naught. This is the unit charge. This is the speed of light. And this is the radius of a preton. You can find the radius of a preton in the electrogravity paper and the electrogravity video series. Uh, we'll show you how to get to that in a few moments. Now, one of the electrogravitic experiments we ran had some fantastic results. We found a wonderful anomaly that might pretty much, I know what it is. I'm not going to give all that information out now. We got a lot of interesting things that came out of it. One of the more important things that came out of it is we found an anti-gravitic effect, a very tiny anti-gravitic effect. We still have to nail it down. It's discussed in the new electromagnetism video series briefly. Uh, it'll be a subject of a future release after we get past the cosmology series. Another thing that came out of all this research is the distinti biot savart model, which shows a matrix magnetic field that is spherical. The difference between the distinti biot savart model and the legacy one is that this operator in the legacy one is a cross product. The cross product makes the B a, a, a sine field, or a, in other words, it's half of a spherical construct. 
because we're using a full vector divide here for vortex algebra, this becomes a full spherical matrix. And we show this in the introduction video of new electromagnetism V3. We have an experiment which demonstrates that the magnetic field has to be spherical. We have an experiment called the latex experiment where new electromagnetism predicts the correct answer of the result. Legacy theory does not. Now, if you notice, our electro electric force model has what looks like time dilation built into it. Well, that makes sense because the model of matter um, is going to be subject to time dilation as quicker it moves. But in ethereal mechanics, time dilation and length contraction are effects as the bodies move through the medium. This is different than, than relativity where they say, oh, length contraction and time dilation must occur, but they don't provide a model which makes it work, which causes it to be true. Ethereal mechanics gives us the mechanisms of time dilation and length contraction. And in the transvariance video, this replaces special relativity. We use a simulation of the Michelson-Morley experiment to derive more effects that are needed to compensate the Michelson-Morley experiment for the null result. And we call this science, we don't call it special relativity, we call it transvariance. Okay, special relativity only tells us these things have to happen. Transvariance shows how these things happen. And because we know how these things work, workarounds will be available that will allow us to travel faster than the speed of light. They're not listed in, in this video series. They're a subject of further research. But because we can show that it is the relative motion of matter through the medium that causes these effects, all we have to do to go faster than the speed of light is drag the medium with us. That's the simplest solution. Now, the length contraction the, called the Lorentz Fitzgerald uh, was, was originally developed to compensate the Michelson-Morley experiment. And this velocity here for the Michelson-Morley experiment is the velocity relative to the medium. That's also what it is. That we get the same equation from ethereal mechanics, and that velocity in ethereal mechanics is relative to the medium. So now what relativity did, because they can't discuss the medium anymore, you know, they say, oh, there is no medium, but we can basically come up with that velocity as a difference between observed and observer. Well, that's the reason why they run into all kinds of paradoxes. Okay, and you can look this all up on your own. We have no paradoxes in ethereal mechanics. Paradoxes are not allowed. If we have a paradox, we stop and we figure out why. And if we have to redo everything, we redo everything. Okay, the rules of acquisition uh, show what we need to have a theory of everything. And paradoxes are not them, are not allowed. Okay, the second book of ethereal mechanics is Constructs. It's not, it's not, it doesn't have a video playlist to it right now. Um, and you don't really need to go find the paper. If you want to, I'll show you how to get there. But um, the Electrogravity, which is book number three, pretty much gives an introduction to all of the constructs that are necessary to go forward. Electrogravity is the pinnacle of ethereal mechanics. It shows the derivation of the gravity. It shows the derivation in, of the electric and magnetic and the electric fields. It shows how gravity works, how consumption works, how to derive the constant G. whole bunch of interesting stuff is in there. I'll show you how to get to the playlist. New Electromagnetism V5 takes the models developed in electrogravity and, and pro produces them for use by electrical engineer on desktop experiments, etc., etc. And that's supported by Physics 2, which is a C-sharp software package that allows us to do very high precision measurement of desktop experiments to validate that what we get from the equations is what we get from the experiment. And we match 100% all of the experiments. Book 5, Cosmology, is the next book out. The paper will be produced for Patreon members, hopefully by the end of January, that could be pushed out because we always get lots of uh, epiphanies that come up. And so the video series, I'm estimating there's about 12 videos, are going to be produced for the Patreon members first and then released to the public 
more than a month later, maybe two months later. Supporting Book 5 will be a software product that we're calling eStronomy, which uses simulations of star fields to show and demonstrate how all these effects occur. Why we get spiral arms and a galaxy. Why the, the well, this is what we're going to show. We're going to show all this stuff here. I don't want to, there's a lot more than we're going to do than what's here because we got about 12 videos of stuff to do. Okay. But this is essentially what we're going to cover in cosmology. You're on the Ethereum Mechanics YouTube channel now. This is the intro video for there. If you go to any one of the playlists, you will find the, you know, nuclear electromagnetism playlist or the um, Vortex Algebra, Ethonics, oh, the, this has not been produced yet, Electrogravity, Transvariance, uh, and New Electromagnetism V5. And uh, well, Vortex Algebra right now is just a paper. There will be a video put out in a little while. This is later research after, Etho after cosmology is done. Okay, if you want to go to the YouTube, uh, I'm sorry, if you want to go to the repository, you go to .stinty.com. This is the repository. Now, some of the links are broken here. I'm still working on it, but uh, this here is uh, a art school copy of a Picasso. It was done by a woman named Julie, so I call this painting Julie. It is my effigy of Mother Nature. If at any time you're lost in the depths of this website, you can always click on Julie to get back to the main page. I don't know if this nav bar works too well. But essentially from the main page, you have the entry to Ethereal Mechanics. You can get to New Electromagnetism shortcut here, but if you go to Ethereal Mechanics, you can get to New Electromagnetism here as well. As you go into each of these, there'll be the paper. This is the older paper. There's a 5.02 paper that's going to be produced in 2025 with all the spelling corrections, typos, the new effects, and the com more completed models. Okay, and then after that, you get the videos in order. Now, what I recommend here is this was the original introduction. Halfway through the video series, we learned more and new wonderful things, and we updated the paper. That's why there's going to be a 5.02 paper. So the videos are pretty much 5.01, 5.02 with new terminology. So do this guy, skip this guy to the end. He's got some good stuff, but hold them off to the end, and then watch the rest of these in order. They're pretty good. These are all in order, so you just have to go down one after the other. Okay, let's go back. Okay, cosmology be here when it's done. This is the transvariance again. There's the paper. I think we have a one point. I'm not sure if that's the right. It's, you know, and then you have all the video series for transvariance here. So you don't have to go looking through the playlist. And then here is here's the paper for constructs if you want that. Here's new electromag uh, here's electrogravity. Here's the paper. I think we have a 1.3 paper on that. I have to double check that. And here are all the videos in order. This is our Patreon site. The software physics 2 is available for uh, engineers and above. If you just want to follow the technology, a passenger to the star is $5 a month and you get access to all the technology videos. Um, not necessarily all the administrative videos, but definitely all the technology videos. This is the blog site. I mean, right now my major source of income for my, this effort is my J-O-B. I'm trying to get my Patreon subscribers up so that I can do this full time and get this done faster. If I can do that, I'll have more free time and I'll have more time to spend on this. And I th big shout out to Sebastian. Thank you very much for doing this. Um, I'll try to get over there. Um, maybe over the Christmas break, I'll spend some time there. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy Ethereal Mechanics. Have a good day.